field four years ago, almost to the day. And ever since then, it was kind of quiet, but then we slowly started seeing them rolling around like California a little bit, and then a couple in Texas. And these are like prototype cyber trucks, and they were testing. Turns out one of them was me. Well, for a day anyway. So what we have here is a near final Tesla Cybertruck. Uh, it's not a, an actual delivery truck yet. It's still one that they've been testing. So there's some small, small prototype things here or there, but everything that I'm about to show you is what's going to show up in the customer's delivery trucks starting basically right now. So uh, I've learned a lot about this truck in my time testing it. There are some surprising things about it, some features that are really cool, it's things that I think truck people are really gonna like, but also, some concerns that I have, some surprises. Buckle up, this is gonna be a mega video. Get subscribed, there's a lot to it. Let's take a look at the final Tesla Cybertruck. All right, first things first. Let's get to the specs. Everyone wants to know the official numbers, everything on paper. And it's funny because we'll get to this in a second, but some things have actually changed from the show truck that showed up on stage, including the overall dimensions. I'll get to that. But the stuff that you probably care about is the basics like price, range, speed, right? So there are gonna be three configurations of the Cybertruck. This one that we're looking at here, which you can't tell by looking at it, but this is the triple motor version. It's not quite the same as the Plaid powertrain, but it is two in the rear, one in the front, and uh, it's gonna be able to do zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds, an 11 second quarter mile. It's got about 845 horsepower. It has torque vectoring at the rear, and uh, it's absurd. They call it the beast. Uh, it's, it's a pretty ridiculous set of specs. I think that makes it the fastest production pickup truck factory ever. But there's also going to be a dual motor version that they also start to ship early, and eventually also a single motor rear wheel drive version. The triple motor is gonna start at about $100,000. So this is new information. We kind of had a much lower idea of what the price was gonna be at launch. Is a $100,000 truck you're looking at, expect somewhere around 75, 85,000 for the dual motor version, and then the single motor will be further down the road. But the dual motor is still 600 plus horsepower and still plenty fast, but that's the general basics. And as far as range, We'll get to the wheels in a second, but it's about a 340 mile max range from the absolute most efficient version of this truck. Now, a couple other last numbers things that I think some truck people will appreciate. First of all, uh, towing capacity and bed capacity. Those are some things that Tesla's told me. I'm gonna put the numbers up here. I think it's 2,500 pounds for the bed, which is pretty cool. And uh, we also measured the truck because officially it's about 5% smaller in every dimension from the original show truck, the prototype that people have been seeing on stage. So I measured it from front to back, and it's about, from bumper to bumper, 224 inches. Uh, we happen to have an F-150 Lightning here that we've been directly comparing it to. It's right over there. We've got uh, some onboard power and all sorts of fun features here. And so I'll mention when things like that also appear on this truck, but it's about the size of an F-150 Lightning. A little, little bit smaller. Now, speaking of the 5% shrinking dimension-wise, there are a lot of things that have changed about this truck versus the original show car. From front to back, there's a lot. There's a motorized front trunk. There's so much to talk about in this video. There is the world's largest windshield wiper, which I'm sure you're curious about, so we'll talk about that. It does actually have side view mirrors. Um, they're removable and they've kind of done all that they possibly can to make it able to be removed. Like you can take this off, it has to ship with this from the factory legally, um, but there is a blind spot monitoring lights inside the truck. There are cameras uh, here on the side of the truck to show you that spot when you put your blinker on. So you could just pop this off if you really wanted to. And then also down at the side here, these wheels, uh, this is an aero cap that is removable. So let's just do that to start. This is the premium tire that's going to come on a 20 inch rim. Uh, all of the initial trucks, triple motor, dual motor, they'll all have this tire on it. Looks like it's a bespoke Goodyear tire. It's got some neat little aesthetic tweaks and I'm sure compound tweaks and tread stuff here. But this is a plastic aero cap with like this outside rubber. It's actually a two piece. 
and it'll get you a couple percent more range on the truck. But if you don't like the look of it, or if you're off-roading, pop that off, and that's how the, the truck's stock wheel will look. A lot of grease and metal in there. But this is a two-part thing, like I said, so if I can rip this off, these are the two pieces. And the reason it's two parts is because they actually wanted these to line up with the little rectangles on the tire. So maybe you want to take the aero caps off to air down the tires and go off-roading and you want maximum brake cooling, whatever you're doing. <clears throat> but if you want to put these back on, you sort of line all of this up. And then you take the plastic bit. And then you're back. Get yep. a shot of this, get a shot of my... So I'm gonna probably not do that again, considering uh, everything it just left on my hands. But you get the idea, you can do that on all four tires, 20 inch rims. These again are the premium tires and yeah. Okay, great, moving on. So, okay, you kinda can't really tell the story of the Cybertruck without addressing the fact that it is a giant stainless steel triangle. I mean, it looks surreal like there is not really a single curve on this entire truck every single piece these are giant pieces of stainless steel there's all sorts of uh, sheen and fingerprint implications that we'll talk about but i don't know it it's an aesthetic thing like not a whole lot of curves fine that's pretty cool but then the other version of that conversation is like look at how sharp the front of the, some of these pieces here, how sharp it is. Not that you're gonna like walk up and poke the front of someone's truck very often, but that's a sharp corner piece of stainless steel right there and right there. And then this, this front piece here, it's this one huge big stamped piece. And I had a couple conversations with people, engineers at Tesla about using stainless steel on the body panels like this. And they have these huge presses that are stamping the stainless steel but steel has this sort of a spring back effect. So you use a lot of force to stamp it in place and then it springs back really quickly. So you have to stamp further than you need to get it to unspring back to the part that you want it to be at. It's a whole complicated thing. All of that is to say, I've seen a bunch of cyber trucks while I've been here and they all have slightly different levels of uh, panel gaps, build quality in general. This truck in particular that we're looking at, it actually looks great. I'm not gonna say it's micron levels of precision or anything like that, but generally panel gaps all the way around are pretty small, pretty even, looks really good. But I don't know, I don't know if I can promise that for every truck. Like even just this huge front piece here has a little bit of like wavering. It's not quite a perfect flat line. So I'm not an expert on it, but I'm just saying this is a truck you're probably not gonna care too much about looking exactly perfect panel gap wise. All right, the next thing we got to talk about is the, the Cybertruck's trunk, AKA the truck bed. Uh, there's a lot going on here, actually. Look at this gigantic slope. It kind of, it looks like a dump truck to me, but one thing you should know is, first of all, a dampened opening for the tailgate, but it's not a power opening tailgate, so you will have to manually close the thing, but it is a nice soft damp. And then the other side is the powered tonneau cover. Oh wait, I should do the thing. They told me it could support up to 300 pounds. So. They told me I could do it, so here we are. I'm not gonna jump, but I'm told 300 pounds of force from somebody standing on one foot. So I think if I jumped, I could probably break the thing. But the fact that I'm standing on it and it's not breaking, that's pretty good. And it's a motorized tonneau cover, which means Pretty smooth, I gotta say. Now, once you're here, there's a bunch of stuff I gotta talk about with this trunk. First things first, you probably noticed it slid down and revealed a rear window, uh, which means number one, yes, there's a rear window. It doesn't go up and down, but at least you have that glass there. And two, yes, that means that when you close the tonneau cover, you are completely blocking your rear visibility. We'll get to that later. <laughs> so, the other thing you probably noticed is when we first saw the Cybertruck, I did a video about this on the Autofocus channel. The bed was just like bare stainless steel. It looked kind of sick, it looked crazy. Uh, but you'll notice now it is fully lined. Tesla said they took it out and 
talked to some construction people about it and were like, all right, what do you think of this truck? What do you think of the bed? And they were like, this is awesome, but the first thing I would do is spray line this so I could not damage it. So I just figured they would line it themselves. Nice thick lining here. Um, the bed size. The official length of the bed for the F-150, the Lightning got over there, was 66 inches on paper. Now when I uh, line this up here, I get all the way to 72 inches, so it's a solid six foot bed. Uh, but there's a little bit of overhang over here, so if I subtract a little bit to account for that, it's about the same, 66 inches. And there's a little bit of a sub trunk, which is pretty cool to see. So a lot of EVs now have a sort of a sub trunk area. This one, no different. You can definitely fit duffel bag in there, probably a full carry-on bag. And there is a drain plug, so if you want to make a cooler out of it and tailgate, this is a pretty good vehicle to do that. There's also some bed lighting. You can see on the left and right, there's lots of lights, and there's also this uh, sort of a latch system. So all sorts of latch points where you can tie things down with cables. What you're probably noticing though is there's no spare tire, no spare wheel. If you do want one, you can buy one separately and tie it up in the trunk, but you don't get one by default. And then the other thing is, there's power in the trunk. So 220 volts here and one 240 volt. If you wanna charge a vehicle with a nine kilowatts out, you can use literally the thing you'd plug into a dryer outlet. You can plug that in here, plug it into a vehicle and give battery to another EV. So just in general, I'm glad that more EVs are doing this, having the ability to power other things and actually charge. You could actually theoretically power your house with this if you had the right inverter, uh, but 11 kilowatts out of the charge port 9.6 kilowatts out of the 240 volt onboard, all great stuff to have. Uh, I should also mention, small detail, bottle cap opener over there, and then some more uh, mounting points for cables and things like that. That's the truck bed of the Cybertruck. There's uh, some lights that we'll talk about in a second, but let's close the tonneau cover. Oh, something I just noticed. If you press the button, it does the whole thing, or if you hold the button, it goes until you let go. That's a lie. <laughs> it was doing that up until that point. See? Wait. Okay, this is weird. It didn't do it that time, but it seems like if I hold it down, whenever I let go, it stops. And if I just press it, it goes all the way until I cancel it which it doesn't want to cancel over there. Okay, I'm learning in real time. Close the whole thing. Tell me when to cancel. No. I knew it. All right, we got to talk about these doors because there's actually a lot to it. So first of all, a lot of times on a concept car or, or a prototype, you'll see there's no door handles and you're like, oh, that's cute. But when you ship the thing, you're going to have door handles eventually. No door handles on the Cybertruck and they're sticking to it. I have my concerns about this. So basically how this works is there's a little button right here that's indented. You press that button and when it's unlocked, it sort of pushes it out maybe two inches. Then you grab in here and open the whole door. And then you close it. The auto presented windows, they all close themselves up here. They're frameless windows. That's cool. It works. Same thing actually back here. Smaller button, you press it, it opens it and it works, and this is actually a full 90 degree door. I love that there's like stainless steel in here. It's very clearly all metal. It's got a nice thunk to it too. But what I've noticed, and this is something you'd already be thinking of if you live in the Northeast or something, is if it's cold, or if it's raining, or if it's frozen, if there's like an inch of ice over here, is this gonna work? Tesla's telling me, and this is a, this is a California company that tells me these things, but they're telling me up to an inch of ice, if you can break through that ice and press this button, it'll push with enough force to open it and break the ice off. I hope that's true. That's debatable, we'll see. But the other thing about that is I think a lot of people are going to open it down here on the stainless steel and you can see the fingerprints go so hard when you open it like that. And because there's no door handles, there's not really a good way of telling someone how to get in. So a lot of people are just gonna grab it right there and fingerprint, look at, it's just, tons of fingerprints on the side here. So, I don't know. There's gonna be a lot of Cybertrucks floating around with lots of fingerprints around the place that people's hands go to open the doors. All right, front of the truck here, couple things that are of note. First of all, if we go down, 
low, this plastic bumper, pretty solid, but also there's two tow hitch rigs on the front, which is awesome. There is a front camera for the first time ever in a Tesla, believe it or not. It's useful on a truck like this where you can't actually see over the front. Then you have this huge daytime running light, but also the headlights, the actual headlights are just these slots down here. I'll show some night, you'll see some night driving footage, so you'll see what the headlights look like. But then the thing everybody's been asking about, and I've seen mostly on Twitter is, is there actually a front trunk in here? If so, how big is it? Yes, there's a front trunk and it's automatically opening. So you just reach in and push the button in like that. And uh, it's a pretty shallow front trunk, I gotta say. This is also the part where I feel compelled to mention that I haven't seen a single Tesla logo yet on this entire truck. It's mostly branded with Cybertruck in this kind of a welded text, which is kind of cool, but it's a pretty shallow front trunk. I mean, I can sit in here and you're probably seeing I'm much too shaded right now. So it's kind of tough to understand how big it is, but it's only maybe the size of two of these Ridge suitcases. So I'm gonna put two Ridge carry-ons in the front of this thing. See if I can actually fit both. Cause this is basically the exact size you'd want for like an airplane overhead. If you actually had to travel with stuff in the front trunk, could you fit it? Not quite. It's really close. I think maybe you might have to do some Jenga to turn them down. As long as they're behind this seal, I think I'm good. Take two. Okay, so that's basically your exact limit is two Ridge carry-ons. Shout out to Ridge for sponsoring this video. So these Ridge carry-ons, which are in these nice colors, they also have a 30% thicker shell than a standard carry-on while staying lightweight. Some nice carbon fiber accents, a durable and grippy handle, and they're weatherproof. So wherever you go, if it's raining, you're good. And if you want a matching Ridge wallet, it literally comes in the same colors. So you've got Royal Black, Alpine Navy, Base Camp Orange, and Matt Olive. And shout out to Ridge for offering a 99 day risk-free trial. So if you don't like it for any reason within 99 days, you can literally send it back for a refund, no questions asked. So check out the bags, the wallets, and everything else Ridge makes and get a special offer at my link below or at ridge.com slash mkbhd. All right, so now let's get to the interior of the Cybertruck. And once again, there's a lot going on, but I think probably the first thing you notice is the only curve in the entire interior is this steering wheel. And yes, it's a wheel, it's not a yoke. I'm pretty sure when they first showed the car, one of the big things they showed was it had a yoke and it had this crazy like marble shelf at the front. Now it's looking a lot more uh, normal car like, but there's still a lot to go over. So first of all, this glass, this glass canopy from the nose of the car, basically all the way back to right in front of my head is the single largest piece of glass in the entire automotive industry. Like if you tried to order a piece of glass this big for your house, it would be a big piece of glass. But this is the biggest windshield we've ever seen. And it kind of is, is this nice dramatic canopy when you're just like looking around and visibility in the truck is very good. Uh, you also have these uh, little removable sunshades that are actually pretty big and there's this nice Look at this magnetic connector up top to get that in place. So that's cool and everything. But aside from that, no other curves. Lots of straight angles and triangles and things like that. A good amount of door storage. So I think you could fit probably two water bottles in there. There's some, some tray storage up here. Then you get up to here and there's all four window controls. The door latch to electronically open it, but also the emergency door latch open. So if you lose power, every door that's electronically latched has to have that manual opening as well. And then in the middle, you've got just kind of a bunch of open space. I kind of like the pedals down there. I think they're metal. But then you have just this big open tray space, which I believe the Rivian also has. And then in front, two wireless chargers, two cup holders, a big old armrest in the middle, and a bunch of storage in here, including another 120 volt outlet and a single 65 watt USB-C charging port. And then you're, uh, you're sort of in the cabin. And this is where I think you kind of return to the normal Tesla look, which is very minimal. I do like this material better than what they had before though. It's 
not the best build in the world. Tesla's been improving with their build quality, but it is what it is. But you can literally, you can like lose something in front of you. Like if I put like a like a marble or a pizza box or something, it, it could slide forward. Of course, I could accelerate and get it back, but there's just a ton of room. And then I'm thinking about visibility over the nose of the car. Man. It's not great. I feel like the more I drive this car, the more I'd get accustomed to the size of it. Um, but I really don't feel like I'm looking right down over the nose. I'm looking out at the end of the windshield and then sort of guessing where the nose is. So, okay, a couple other smaller things. First of all, this uh, light up here, touch sensitive. I think that's pretty cool. There's ambient lights all the way around the cabin and you can change the color of that with RGB with software. I'll get to the software in a second. There's also an interior facing cabin camera and there would normally be, this is one of the prototype -y things, but there would normally be a regular rear view camera here. Now, as I mentioned, you don't actually get to see out the back from the mirror if your tonneau cover is closed. But there also is no camera option for that, that rear view mirror to turn into a feed from a camera. Instead, that will always be on the screen. And I think I found that that's it's actually fine. You just sort of train yourself to glance at the top of the screen instead of at where the mirror normally is, but that's something to note. And uh, one more thing, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, huge tinted roof over your head, all the way back over the passenger's heads, and a ton of speakers. Not a single curve to any of the speaker grills, but there are speaker grills all over this cabin, and they're all either trapezoids or squares. Okay, something I've just realized. I, f I thought that it was required that the only actual physical button you need in your car is the hazards button. This truck does not have a hazards button. It has a touch sensitive hazards thing, but then there's also your park reverse neutral and drive gears if you actually want to change them up above your head. Uh, I've never seen it there in any car ever, actually. Typically it's right in front of you with the paddle shifters or your gear selectors and you can still do it on the screen like you can in other Teslas, but that that's new. That's definitely new. Okay, now the back seat of the Cybertruck. It's weirder than you think. All right, first of all, I like that the door is open 90 degrees. You get the seat back in front of you. Really good rear leg room, mostly because the seat in front of me is on these cool Cybertruck looking rectangular risers, but that means I have real space to put my feet under the seat in front of me, which is huge for legroom. So either side, totally fine. Middle, not the best legroom ever, but still a totally great back seat. Got another screen back here that I'll show you in a second. There's a little bit of seat back storage, but check this out. There's a little trick to the back seat just for storage. So although you already have a front trunk and a rear trunk, if you want even more covered storage with this latch right here, mm -hmm. The right seat actually comes completely up and you can just keep stuff down here if there's no person here. Matter of fact, the left two seats come over here. Also do the same thing. I'm gonna get out and pull that latch as well. And then that's just, that's a ton of room for activities. Look at this. Not that that's better than having a seat, but you can put a bunch of boxes back here. You could put, I don't know. You can just put stuff back here. Also, there's the nine and a half inch screen for the passengers, which is where I discovered you can move the passenger seat, not the driver's seat, on the screen. And these are also heated left and right, not middle, but heated left and right rear seats. They look ventilated, they look cold, but they don't do that. Just, uh, just heat. Or you could just like watch a movie or direct your airflow. Cool. Okay, so whenever you're talking about a new vehicle like this, a new platform like this, you gotta talk vehicle controls. So as I'm in the driver's seat, that's gonna be this new 18 and a half inch touchscreen in the center, biggest ever in a Tesla. It's also the biggest ever car. And this steering wheel, which I got a lot to say about it, but you're gonna notice it looks pretty familiar to any other Tesla, but they have made some key changes that I think uh, I actually like a lot. There's still no stocks. There's still no blinker stocks, still no drive, reverse, all that stuff. But the buttons on the steering wheel are at least now haptic, like actual buttons. They're not haptic touch controls where you touch it and it vibrates to simulate a button. No, it actually clicks and moves this time. So that's awesome. So at least that's better. So that's the, that's the blinkers on the steering wheel. That's your headlights. That's your giant windshield wiper, which I'll talk about and your voice controls. You still got your wheels up and down for volume of media and your autopilot controls. And then this sort of a flat 
squircle, I guess is what you'd call it, like a squared off circle type thing for the steering wheel. Oh, and then, uh, it's a real horn this time. There's no, like, button on the steering wheel horn like in my car. So, I really appreciate that. Also, again, no Tesla logo on the steering wheel. It's a Cybertruck, like, trapezoid silhouette type thing. So, again, I think the only Tesla logo on the whole car is literally the key, same as every other Tesla. But that brings us, of course, to the new software. So I think they've done an actually really, really good job with the software and this all new cyber UI. So they, if you've used a Tesla before, it's laid out the exact same way, but it's all themed in a very cyber truck way. But there's some new little things that they've done. It's, it's really well thought out. And I still honestly, after using it, I really feel like Tesla has the best software in the car industry that's not CarPlay and Android Auto. So first of all, you, you start with just this huge cyber truck in the middle for all your vehicle controls. There's little hovering dots. So if you want to open the tailgate or open the tonneau cover, you can do that with any of these little hovering buttons. Open the charge port flap, charge, charge port flap. Cool. Um, but then all of the rest of the looks about this car, uh, you can adjust in real time. So first of all, ride height. You tap the wheel there. We are at the sort of a entry ride height where it squats to be as easy as possible to get into. You can also go low, medium, or high, and it adjusts super fast. There's a pretty awesome 12 inches of suspension travel between the lowest mode and the highest mode. You can go all the way up to 17 inches of clearance in off-road mode. Extract mode is the absolute highest. It'll add another 80 millimeters of clearance, but it'll go a foot down from that. So that's pretty sick. And there are aluminum skid plates slash aero shields at the bottom of the truck. I continue to move around. Uh, if I lower the window, for example, look at the window on the car. Halfway down, halfway down. I go all the way down on this window, all the way down on that window. So that's real time. I get my lights in real time. I have uh, the headlights down here. If I even turn the steering wheel, all of that moves in real time. And it's kind of on this like Mars terrain, cyber terrain, whatever you want to call it. I think that's sweet. So you just get a full overview of the car there. You've got your media, your navigation. It's telling me if I need to close my door or fasten my seatbelt. And this is my range indicator up here, 223 miles right now, which if I tap it is 76% battery, pretty close to what I'm expecting. And then you see your navigation, which basically if you just swipe over, you can fill that right two thirds of the screen with navigation and keep your vehicle controls on the left. And when you're in drive, that looks just like it normally does in a Tesla with other stuff on the road. But now you have all your navigation stuff. You, <laughs> you always have all your stuff in the dock down at the bottom, heated steering wheel with two levels, which is nice now, and your heated and cooled front seats, which is great. So if you just get into controls and dynamics, these are sort of the two spaces you'll spend the most time. Controls is all of the things with just opening and closing, unlocking, screen brightness, headlights. Your glove box is a drawer, which I think is a little bit unique. A button on the screen, I kind of wish you still had a button to open the glove box, but all of that is here. And then dynamics is where you have all of your typical like steering and acceleration profiles for Tesla. So in the triple motor version, that would be comfort mode, standard mode, and beast mode. A little cringy, I guess, but that is your maximum acceleration. And then your ride and handling and your preferred ride height. If you go custom, you can actually individually adjust these things. So acceleration, I'm going to go beast mode. But ride and handling, maybe you want it to be a little more relaxed or a little more focused. That just basically means your damping and your suspension is either a little firmer or a little softer. I got to say, though, the steering is, in my opinion, the craziest thing about the Tesla Cybertruck crazier than the design, crazier than the dimensions, crazier than everything else about it, is the steering. So it's a steer-by-wire system. This is the first time Tesla's done this. Um, you can't actually change the steering weight or steering feel. It's always the same ratio all the time, but it's crazy for two reasons. One, there is rear axle steering, and it is very, very active and really helpful. And two, is the total turn is less than 180 degrees for your maximum tightest turn. Usually you're used to doing a whole bunch of movement on the wheel. You don't have to do that anymore. So that kind of makes the muscle memory of grabbing the top of the squircle useless. So first of all, the rear wheel steer, it's awesome. It's up to 10 degrees in the opposite direction of the front wheels at low speeds under 40 miles an hour. And what that does, if you've heard of this before, it effectively shortens the wheelbase and allows you to turn 
way, way tighter. I think we'll do a sort of a comparison with the F-150 Lightning, which is a normal truck that doesn't have 10 degrees of rear wheel steer. And this one, it just means you can turn way sharper. It feels way more nimble in parking lots. It, it feels like it shrinks the wheelbase, the whole dimensions of the truck. It's great. It takes some getting used to, but it's very useful. And then at higher speeds above 40 miles an hour is when it actually changes one or two degrees in the same direction as the front wheel. So that's going to feel more like lengthening the wheelbase and a more stable movement, changing between lanes at highway speed, stuff like that. But the fact that your entire steering radius is right there in less than one turn, like half a turn, is crazy. It takes some getting used to. It It is awesome that you can turn around so easily and make those tight parking lot maneuvers and make this big truck feel smaller, but it is, it's really, it's a lot. It's going to take some getting used to, but I think we should just get to driving this thing. So let's do it. Let's, let's drive the Cybertruck. All right, driving the Tesla Cybertruck. Feels like a Doug Miro way to start the video, but man, okay. It still doesn't really feel like a real vehicle, but it definitely is. And first impression really is, well, okay. It feels like a Tesla, that's not gonna be a shocker. Really instant throttle response. This is the triple motor version, it's the beast. Um, but also like spacing wise, I'm just looking around, just trying to feel how big this vehicle is. This is a small road, school bus. Uh, I'm able to maneuver around though. I have pretty good visibility everywhere. I'm just thinking a lot about where the nose of the truck is because it is such a short nose. It's a really different, different ratio. I'm not used to the hood being that short compared to where the windshield is, but either way, it's pretty quiet. I will say these laminated windows do a good job of sealing out all the noise. They also happen to be shatterproof. The truck also happens to be allegedly bulletproof. I'm not testing that in this video, but you've seen the pictures. So the idea is it's it's really well built. I'm just trying to figure out, all right, this feels nimble, all right? Steering is, the weight's not gonna change, so this is the way it always is. Getting used to steering is really gonna be the number one thing for people they're not going to be used to the entire steering being less than an entire turn. It's a half a turn, 180 degrees. I think it's 170. And it is a pretty big truck, but it's, I feel like it's a tiny bit smaller than the F-150 Lightning. I think they did a good job of giving you as much space as you can. Like this is a spacious cabin, spacious back seats, as I showed you, and a full six foot bed, but it's got the smallest frunk, even smaller than the smaller Rivian R1T. So they've kind of pushed around the dimensions a little bit, but second thing is just the vast distance between me and the front of the windshield. And then I just straight up can't see the front of the car. I can't see the nose, no matter how high I look, that's just different, very different. Something I'm gonna have to get used to. Okay, love that the button blinkers are actually physical buttons. And now we're on a bit of a crazier road so we can, holy, Come on, that's crazy. Actually, the suspension pretty firm right now, and there is a large delta between the firmest suspension and the softest suspension that you can have. The body itself, thanks to the stainless steel, thanks to the way it's built, is very, very stiff, torsionally stiff. It's very rigid. And so all of that effort to be either soft or firm goes on the suspension. And they have really good suspension, really good travel, really fast travel. It is, it really is very quiet. Okay, a couple other interesting things that you note. Know, one is like huge amount of glass. World's largest windshield is pretty funny. I think with every Tesla I've reviewed for the past couple of years, there's always been one muscle memory remap required to get used to this thing. And I think with previous Teslas, like we all know about the center screen, you're used to checking right in front of you for the speed. Now you have to look over to the side, just a little remap there. With the yoke steering wheel and the buttons on the steering wheel, that's a remap people have to adjust to. They're pretty stubborn about this stuff. With this one, it's gonna be that there is no rear visibility with the mirror when the tonneau cover is closed. So my tonneau cover is closed right now. Can't see anything behind me, but I've sort of started to remap my glance behind me to the preview of the rear facing camera, which is on the screen all the time. And so I just keep glancing there to see what's behind me. You can actually move it to the left or right hand side so you get a bigger preview when it's on the right. 
or you can just move it on the left. So yeah, that's that's the Cybertruck muscle memory remap is your rear view mirror doesn't have a camera mode. So if you want to check behind you while the tunnel cover's closed, you're looking down there. All right, we got a nice little highway coming up. <laughs> I like instinctively put my hand on this side of the wheel to get ready for a big turn, oh my God. but I don't have to do it because it's so little, it's a little turn. All right, let's get on the highway. So you don't need a ton of horsepower for uh, regular pickup truck stuff, but merging onto a highway makes a lot of sense. Let me uh, get some space between the car in front of me. Oh my God, on all season tires, all terrain tires, shouldn't be able to do that. Uh, a couple other interesting things though about this truck. One, world's largest windshield wiper is hilarious. Uh, it looks ridiculous. It it might be logistically ridiculous too. I don't know if in the ice or the snow if it's going to be able to like break apart enough ice to move that huge windshield wiper. There's probably a much bigger motor to move it, but it works. So Neil, if you're wondering, it doesn't quite cover the entire windshield, but it does go above my head and cover 75% of what the passenger is going to see too. So I feel like it's it's working at least. And then the other thing to note is for your road tripping, totally compatible with all the Tesla superchargers. It has all of the autopilot stuff that other Teslas have, but it's also now an 800 volt architecture. And what that basically means is it's able to charge faster at V4 superchargers, and it's able to make total wires thinner because they conduct better and they're more efficient. And so the total wire weight of the car goes down for all of the high voltage systems. It also has a 48 volt low voltage system, which is four times the normal 12 volts you'd see in most cars. So in general, this is, it feels future proof for that reason, uh, but it'll still charge just the same as any other Tesla at V3 and V2 superchargers. A little more road noise too. You notice a little more, a little more all-terrain tread coming through to the cabin. These bespoke tires, I'm told, do have foam in them, but you can still hear it and feel it. Tiny bit of steering feel, that's weird. Teslas are usually pretty numb, but this does have some steering feel. Now, probably the funniest, most interesting option that I'm told about with this truck is the extended battery option. So all the Cybertrucks will have the same 123 kilowatt hour battery size, but as we all know, long road trips and towing and hauling things especially takes a toll on your battery. So there will be an optional battery, uh, an add-on battery that you put in the trunk that adds 120 miles of range. It also adds a ton of weight because now you're hauling around a huge battery, but now you have close to a 400, 450 mile range truck, which might be what people need to haul big things if they're gonna work with it. It's, it's interesting. I really feel like the biggest strength of the Cybertruck is it's gotta be the, the power, the sheer force of 2.7 seconds, zero to 60, 800, 50-ish horsepower, like no other truck moves in a straight line like this one does. But I'm also gonna include the steering as a pro. You gotta get used to it, but again, that tight turning radius and how nimble it feels, like on a highway, that's remarkably responsive. Like I can turn my wheel like this in a Model S Plaid and it does not feel as responsive as this. That's a crazy thing to say. So then its downside uh, is gonna be one, just that people think it's ugly and that's fine a lot of people are going to think it's ugly and two is it's more expensive than we originally thought it doesn't have that price advantage i am driving a hundred thousand dollar truck right now there's no way around that the f-150 lightning i'm following right now is going to cost significantly less the rivian r1t and the, and the hummer are also very expensive but it's no longer an advantage that we might have thought it was gonna be. Now, this isn't a review. I haven't towed anything with this. I haven't used any of the trailer features. I haven't filled it up with rocks and mud and gotten it dirty. I haven't off-roaded at all. There is a total separate off-road mode in the thing I haven't used. I haven't road tripped in it. I haven't lived with it. I do have an order, so I plan on doing all that. So make sure you get subscribed to see the full review of the Cybertruck when it comes out. But I think generally, as this is my second impressions ever and first time ever driving the thing, I think they really got themselves something solid here. We're gonna have to see about fit and finish. A lot of, a lot of, let's see, a lot of wait and see, but I'm impressed with this, I'm impressed. So let me know what you think. Obviously, there are gonna be some polarizing thoughts on the looks. Let me know if you're in the, this thing is ugly and I'll never buy it camp. 
why is this thing looking like a stainless steel refrigerator on wheels? I totally get it. But let me know what you think about Cybertruck versus F-150 Lightning versus Rivian R1T. Let me know if there are other things you want to see in a video and get subscribed to be among the first to see that stuff. I think that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Peace.